Well, praise the Lord in Jesus' holy and blessed name. What a beautiful day it is to be in Jesus. Yes, it is. Praise the Lord in Jesus' name. Brother Thomas with you here, and this is a ministry of Jesus Christ. And today, some encouraging words on God's ability to do, to do everything that he has said he has done and is doing and will do. Absolutely. And this is really, do we trust God? Do we truly trust God? Do we take him at his word? Well, we know that the scriptures are the inspired word of God. For all scriptures given by inspiration of God. Right? Yes. And that is true. It's God breathed. God breathed it. Men wrote it. Yes, in their own, but inspired by God, by the very Spirit of God. Inspired from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21. All inspired by God. Every word. Every word. And so then, can God really do all the things that we read of in Scripture that he says he has, is, and will do? Yes, every one of them. Every one of them. We look at the creation and there are those who, you know, hard to take it as a six days and then on the seventh day he rested as you know, six 24-hour days, so maybe it was really... God says that it was six days and on the seventh day he rested. So... Can God do that? Could he have? You know, well, absolutely. God, whether it was a 24-hour day or whatever nonsense that some would like to apply to some of it because it gets pretty crazy. <laughs> God is able to do it in six days. He wouldn't say he did it in six days if he couldn't do it in six days. Six 24-hour days as we know 24-hour days today. He absolutely can and could have. And actually, he did. We believe he did. <laughs> God is able. The flood, same thing. Well, there's evidence all over the earth, high up into the tops of mountains, the fine seashells. And, and so, is it, was there a flood? that covered the earth, as described in Genesis? Yes, there was. It did happen. It was a flood. That's a historical event. It did take place. God commanded Noah to build an ark, and he built one. It took him about 100 years, <laughs> and he built it. About three football fields long and a football field wide, you know, with a football field wide. Yes, he did. And he built it in such a place as that there wasn't going to be just a flooded river that would pick it up and move it around. It would take a flood flood to move this ark. And so then the animals come. Noah didn't go out and find animals and bring them. God moved in the creatures to come to Noah and to the ark. Is God able to do that? Absolutely. Well, Thomas, you're telling me that God kind of went, hey, you two birds over there, go go where Noah is and get on his boat. Ark, yes. <laughs> exactly how that works is God's way of doing things, but yes, he did. Absolutely. He sent the animals to Noah. God is able to move in his creation and do what needs to be done to bring about his perfect plan. God is able. So the flood took place just as the scriptures indicate that it did. Party of the Red Sea, same thing. An east wind blew all night, it says. And the sea parted, literally walls. It's the word walls is there. 
Two walls, one on each side with a path right down the middle, across the sea. Dried the ground. They didn't have to pull their stuff through mud and muck and mire to get to the other side. He literally dried the ground so that they could cross on dry ground. Can God part a sea? Well, they, with the blast of his nostrils, the waters stand up like an heap. Of course he can, and he did. Another historical event, by the way. It did happen. God parted the sea. They crossed on dry ground. And then he covered the enemies. Yes, he did. All of these things are absolutely possible. Yes, they are. God would not use them as stories if he couldn't do them. Well, we say they're history, and he did do them. Absolutely. On a more personal note, in, in, in how is this working in people's lives, consider Joseph here, who was thrown into a well and then sold into slavery and in Potiphar's house. Potiphar's wife tries to seduce him, and he rejects that. And says, how can I? I can't do that to, to Potiphar. He's been great to me, and I can't do it in the sight of my God. Mm -mm. Even with all that had happened to Joseph and that he had been through, he realized, he knew and understood that God knew what was happening to him, that God was with him and could see what was happening. And in the end, when his brothers would come to them, he would tell his brothers to say, yes, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good, to save much people alive. Was God able to have Joseph in the right places at the right times, in the right moments, to be in that place at the right moment in time? Absolutely. And he was. And much people were saved alive. Oh, hallelujah. God is able. Absolutely. In the virgin birth. Here, Mary is pregnant. But this child, now they're in, they're up north in Nazareth. You need to be down south in Bethlehem when this baby is born. God moves an entire nation of people around by causing you know, the tax. And they all had to go to their own places to you know, family place and pay, to pay it. And so Joseph and Mary travel from Nazareth to Bethlehem. They arrive in Bethlehem right on time. Jesus is born in Bethlehem, born of a virgin birth. Now, can God move an entire nation of people around, by the way? Well, absolutely, he did. Moved upon the right people and the right things. And right, it, done it is, absolutely done. And Joseph and Mary and Jesus are in Bethlehem on the very day they need to be there. And the virgin birth, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God would come upon Mary and she would conceive and bring forth a son and they would call his name Jesus. Virgin birth, yes. God with us. This is how God enters his own creation. Miraculous indeed to think about how he did this, that he entered his own creation. Born, this child, born of a virgin birth. God with us. Yes, indeed. This is how it's, and it's an absolute, this is the way it has to be. It can't be, well, they say it was a virgin birth, but it wasn't really, because then it doesn't work. Because as the Lamb of God, the sacrifice for the sins of the world, Jesus would have to be born without sin. And a virgin birth is the only way for that. For sin is passed on through the seed of the man. Eve was deceived, Adam disobeyed. The sin is passed on through the seed of the man. So no man, earthly man, can be the father of Jesus, the Christ, the true Messiah, the Lamb of God, must be God. God entering his own creation. Jesus, yes, fully God, fully man. Truly an amazing awe-inspiring thought. 
to realize how God entered his own creation and would be the sacrifice for the sins of the world. Yes, indeed. Virgin birth. Absolutely true. Mm -hmm. Was God able to make all that happen? Absolutely. Without question, hesitation, or reservation, we tell you it's the truth. Oh, and amen. Same with his death, his burial, his resurrection. All being on the right time, the right day, the right year, the right place. Even dying the right death upon the cross and upon a tree. The cross is made of wood and it's tree. Cursed is everyone that hangeth upon a tree. Jesus, whose blood was shed, died upon that cross. A physical death, denoted by the fact that when they took him down, they put him in a tomb and rolled a stone in front of the tomb. But on the third day, Jesus rose from the dead. The resurrection, true. Can God raise the dead? Absolutely. Absolutely. And he, the, <laughs> there's one coming too. There absolutely is one coming. And so all of these things are those things which God can do. God, through all of this, can save a wretched sinner. For while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. How could God save a wretch like me? But he did. Praise God. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> but he did. Salvation is possible. Yes, indeed. Thanks to the shed blood of Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection, Jesus is alive, a living Savior. And because he lives, we live also. Yes, indeed. And it is true that the very Spirit of God, the very Spirit of Christ, has taken up residence in us, dwells in us. All of us. How he does that? All of us at the same time? What an amazing truth. But it is true. The very Spirit of God. Remember, Psalm 139, is it? Mm -hmm. God, if I go here, you're there. I go, uh, I go try to hide in a mountain, you're there. I, I you know, go to the depths of the sea, you're there. There's no place I can run and hide from you. You know me inside and out. You know where I am. You're here with me now. And if I go somewhere else, you'll be there when I get there because you're there with me all the way through till I get there and you were there already anyway. <laughs> God is able. God is able. God has the power. God is able. And he's able to do these things because it's, it's his plans, his purpose, his glory, all for his glory, always. Everything is for his glory, first and foremost. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so what God has promised he will do, he will do. Even save a wretch like me. Indeed. And Jesus is coming again. That's another one of those promises that... Yes, future. We've been looking at the ones in the past and present with the salvation of ourselves. God saving wretches like us through the preaching of the gospel. 2,000 years and Christ crucified is still the truth, the way, oh, hallelujah. <laughs> God is able. God is able to keep his gospel going forward year after year of those days and of that time to this very day. Right now, right here. And yes, into the future is Jesus will come again. Oh, and hallelujah. If he went, he's coming. He went, so he's coming. Likely sooner rather than later. And all of the things that God has promised that will be in these last days of all of this will take place just as he has promised they will. If God can create the earth in six days and on the seventh day rest, 
There's nothing in the book of Revelation that he cannot do. If God can flood the whole world, saving only eight, Noah and his family, and the right number of animals. If God can part a sea and dry the ground, if God can have Joseph in just the right place at just the right time, if God can enter his own creation through a virgin birth, if God can raise Jesus from the dead, there isn't anything that God cannot do, that God says he will do. We can absolutely, positively, without question, without hesitation, reservation, at all, know that every promise God has made, every deed that shall be done will be done perfectly, exactly as God has promised it will be. Then they say, oh, no. yes, it will. Yes, it's going to happen just the way God says it's going to happen. Well, brothers and sisters, be encouraged, comforted, be edified, and sharing the truth in love, knowing that God is absolutely able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. All. Oh, exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, by the power that worketh in us, the very Spirit of God that works in us. Holy Spirit. Yes, indeed. And if today you don't know Jesus as your Savior, know this or hear this. I hope you'll know to believe it and receive it. Jesus is coming again. And all that is promised to be for those who do know Jesus as Savior, and all that he has promised for those who do not and reject Jesus as their Savior. The promises will be kept perfectly to the letter, to the very jot and tittle. Yes, indeed. Oh, praise God. That is a glorious truth. A glorious truth. Profound indeed. So today, no. Brothers and sisters, be of good cheer. For those who do not know Jesus today, today is a good day to know him. But while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Because God first loved us, that we might love God in return. Today, you can know God's love. Know Jesus, Christ crucified. Love. He took your sins. The sinless Lamb of God took your sins upon himself and bore them on the cross for you. A price paid that you can never pay. No matter how good you try to be, nothing. His price is the price, and it's the only price. And he is the way, the truth, and the life, and there really is no other. No one can come to the Father, no man can come to the Father, but by Jesus. No one, no how, but by Jesus. And so know that today. Know that you are a sinner, lost and separated from God, and in need of salvation, and a Savior, and that that Savior is Jesus Christ. And only Jesus Christ can save you. Believe. Confess your sins. For he is just and willing to forgive your sins. To cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Yes, indeed. Glorious truth. Believe. Receive forgiveness. And become a child of God today. And brothers and sisters, keep sharing. Be encouraged, be of good cheer. Every promise God has made, God is keeping, has kept, is keeping, and will keep. Oh, praise God. 
What a glorious truth that is to know. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen.